Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today what I'm going to show you is how a tennis ball can help you solve your back pain. Now obviously um, there's a lot of different types of back pain, but there's common threads that most people who have back pain have. And one of those things is joint stiffness. Uh, so whether you have um, a nerve root that's getting irritated, whether you have stenosis, whether you have a disc bulge, whether you've got sciatic pain, whether you've just got some general muscular soreness or whatever it may be, generally there's a through line of dysfunction um, in the joints within your spine. And a lot of the time it goes unnoticed because the, the stiffness and the tightness itself may not hurt, but it can form the foundation that forces other tissue around that to become sore and irritated over time. So, um, so this is a really significant exercise. Now, you don't have to use a tennis ball. You can certainly use any ball. This is a lacrosse ball. They work just as well. You want to choose something that has the density that you feel comfortable with. Obviously, if you have more back pain or you're in quite a lot of pain, a tennis ball is probably going to be more comfortable for you because it is softer. But if you have less pain and you just want to improve the function of your spine, or you can tolerate it, then go for something a little bit harder because that'll make more, more of an impact. So, so what do we do? So, uh, so first and foremost, with any exercise that we do, we want to make sure that we have a before and an after to compare it to. So one of the easiest things to do, depending on how sore you are, um, is to do a simple uh, a back stretch to see how you move to begin with, then we'll compare it to how you feel after doing this exercise. So how that is, and normally I'd get everyone to stand up, but for the purposes of this, if you can imagine I'm standing, a really good way to analyze um, the stiffness in your back is just to arch backwards. And just to get a sense of A, how far you feel. And if you are standing, you can slide your hands down the back of your thighs, or as I said, you can just, you can just arch backwards. But the key here is that you obviously want to get a sense of how far back you go. But for most people, you also want to get a sense of how it feels to do that. And for most people, you'll feel, you may not feel pain, but you may feel like there's a bit of stiffness or a bit of rustiness. You may even have that sensation of something being out of place, when in actual fact, it's just an expression of, expression of joint stiffness. So again, we wanna do a test, see how smooth it feels to arch backwards, do this exercise, then retest it to make sure that you have made a genuine change. Because if you do the exercise and you don't feel like you've made any change, then the areas that you've been working on with the ball may not necessarily have been the crucial areas that you need to work on to free everything back up again. So, so the good thing about this exercise is A, it's safe with common sense, and B, is that it, it's a really good way to clear up the general stiffness in your back. And as I said before, is whether you have a disc bulge or something that's irritated or just some stiffness or some neural stuff, uh, as long as you're looking for what feels stiff and tight, you can't do anything, or it's very hard to do anything wrong. Obviously common sense applies here as well. But the, the important thing is, is that that through line of stiffness tends to be there for everyone. And if you're watching this video and you don't have a sore back, do this anyway, because you should find that um, if you are potentially on the path to becoming sore at some point, you can basically do the exercise and bring yourself back down to a comfortable baseline and sort of reclaim a lot of that natural buffer against back dysfunction. So, how to do this exercise, and now we've covered this in previous videos, but for the purposes of this one, we want to imagine that, obviously, if you're looking at me from behind, we want to picture the spine and the bumps that go straight down the middle of your back. So with the ball, we don't necessarily want you sort of right in the middle on the bumps. What we want you instead is we want you to roll just off to the side because the joints in your spine, the segments of your spine that connect, uh, connect each other together, they're just off to the side. So, so don't necessarily put the ball in the middle. Don't go all the way out to the side, at least for the purposes of this exercise. We're going to be right in the middle and then off to the side. So you're sort of resting on a bit of a shelf that you'll feel. And how that looks basically is again, instead of having it right in the middle, we'll start in the middle, but then just roll off to the side. So I'm gonna do this side. And all I need you to do is just lie down. So it's a very simple exercise. If lying down is hard for you, you can definitely do it standing up against the wall. You can do it sitting on a chair. It is more advantageous to do it on the floor. Uh, and similar to the different types of balls that you use, whether it's a tennis ball or lacrosse ball, baseball, whatever you've got, uh, the surface that you do it on can change the pressure involved as well. So obviously a tennis ball on carpet is on the more gentler side. 
if you did this on hardwood floors, then obviously you're going to get more pressure. So you can pick and choose um, how hard you go based on what you feel you need. So again, we start on the middle of the spine, just roll off immediately to the side. So again, I'm on this side. And all I want you to do here is just to move the ball up and down until you feel that you hit a spot that feels a little bit stiff, a little bit tight, and possibly tender. Now, the key to this exercise is you want to stay here. So, so while I've found a spot on myself, I just want to explain something. So, so the, the really important thing about using the tennis ball to help solve your back pain is that we're, we're not chasing pain, we're chasing stiffness and tightness. So if you can imagine um, any piece of machinery that's designed to function really well with all these moving parts, if you rust up one particular part, that part on its own could fail in the process of becoming rusty, but if it's become rusted, then all of a sudden that anchor can affect anything associated mechanically with that rusty spot. It's the same thing with the back and the human spine, is that you can have parts of your back that become stiff and rusty for reasons we'll get to in a second, but if they become stiff and rusty without causing you a problem, all of a sudden that that anchor, that handbrake can start to create extra load and extra dysfunction on other areas. So, uh, so again, if you are irritating a joint, bulging a disc, we often find that there's a whole bunch of stiffness above and below those areas that almost channel the load and channel the force and the movement that you have through more isolated areas, as opposed to being a whole spinal movement, we get these rusty sections above and below and the only section that can sort of move successfully is that is this, the spot that ends up getting sore potentially. So, so the, the reason why I wanted to say that is if you have pain on one side, it doesn't always mean you have to be on that side. That's not always where the stiffness is going to be. So, so for me, if I can find a spot here that feels somewhat tight, I need to get a sense of how well the ball sinks in, whether it feels stiff, tight, tender, whether it feels hard or soft. And then what I want to do here is I want to compare it to the exact same spot on the other side. So I want to roll over the top of my spine and then immediately onto the shelf next to it. Same thing again. So for me on this side, it feels a little bit more tender, but it doesn't feel anywhere near as stiff or tight or restricted. So thankfully, the side that I need to work on is actually the side that feels stiffer. So for, for people that have um, you know, leg pain, um, sciatica, just referred pain into their legs, a lot of the time the stiffness in the spine is on the other side. And that, that anchor on, say, someone's right-hand side becomes stiff, that doesn't move very well. So the joints on the other side have to sort of move differently to what they're designed to. And then you can start to irritate the nerve, wear down a joint, become arthritic, and then get some pain down the, the opposite leg. So... So that's why we want to chase feelings of tightness and stiffness, because if you can take that handbrake off, all of a sudden you're normalizing the motion of both sides. Now, if you feel like there's still some degree of tightness on one side, on the other side, the sore side, you can still gently put pressure through that, but you don't want to spend anywhere near as much time because if it's irritated, you don't necessarily have to be pushing through that if it's not genuinely stiff and tight. You can sort of spend a little bit of time there if you want to, but spend most of your time on the areas that feel stiff. Now, the, the second part of this is we, we don't want you to roll. Rolling doesn't necessarily solve anything here. We want constant specific pressure on the joints of your spine. But the interesting thing is, if you were to, if you have a lot of low back pain, so right down the base of your spine, or like a band of pain across the base of your spine, there's every chance that there's a stiff section sort of at the base of your rib cage. So if you're down low right down the base of your spine at the moment, just work your way up to sort of the base of your rib cage. Or a little bit higher most people are very stiff in their rib cage and this junction between the lower back and the rib cage is a common source of stiffness and dysfunction so um, and the reason why I'd like you to come up here is there's an extra um, thing that we can do here to help solve your back pain so so same thing again right up against the spine so not on it on the, the spinous process of the bum so just off to the side um, see how that feels, then because we're on the thoracic spine, which your rib cage is a part of, we can then move the ball further out to the side onto the ribs. Now there's a joint that connects the ribs to your spine. That joint can also become rusty and stiff if the spinal joint itself is rusty and stiff. So it makes sense. They're very close to each other. If you're sort of in a bit of a sort of a flexed posture, 
or a bent posture or a slouchy posture, that bend goes right through your spine. So it's not just a, a spinal joint that bends and the rib cage stays there, everything sort of goes with it. So, so we often find that not only can the spine be quite stiff and tight, but a centimeter or a, you know, an inch off to the, more to the outside can also be quite tender and stiff as well. We just don't want to miss that because it's an important part of the process. So, so the key for this exercise is that you want to go hunting for your dysfunction. So if you can prioritize stiffness and tightness over pain, just be aware that they can be on separate sides. If you genuinely compare the sides and you feel like where your tenderness is is also where it doesn't sink in as easily, it's extra stiff and extra tight, then that's okay to gently push through. But what I often find is that um, it doesn't always, sort of where your symptoms and where your pain is or are, doesn't always match up with where the stiffest part of your back is. And I think clinically we underestimate that asymptomatic stiffness because again, if we're trying to improve the function of one section of your spine that's painful, if we neglect everything around it, then we're missing the bigger picture and we're also missing opportunities to improve how you feel and get rid of your pain. So, so as I said off the top, um, clearly uh, your specific pain needs specific things so please consult a physical therapist speak to someone to get some specific advice related to you but in the meantime a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball or anything similar is a genuinely good way to make improvements in your pain and function immediately and also over time so as I said before when you do this you want to make sure that you then retest your movement and again I'm not sure how this looks on camera but um, I strategically had the ball in an area where I know I get stiff and just from a quality perspective it just feels like it just feels like I can get a lot further than before so um, but as I say with these exercises uh, please don't take my word for it um, you don't have to trust me you don't have to believe me at all the only thing you should really care about are results. So if you can please do the arching backwards or even just bending side to side, whatever you feel gives you a sense of how stiff your spine is, spend 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, 40 minutes, you know, in front of the TV of the night time, just systematically hunting sort of up and down your spine on both sides. Go as high as that sort of mid thoracic spine or the base of your shoulder blades. Just make sure you compare both sides and you should find that this, if there is some stiffness in your spine, which is generally quite um, common, it's, it's probably going to be there, it doesn't shift. It doesn't go from left to right to left to right and left to right. It generally follows a pattern of being on the same side. And then if it switches, it switches and then it continues up on that side for a while. So if you feel like you've found the spot, then generally it's, there's going to be a few in a row that are stiff. But just be aware that at some stage it might switch. But again, you should be able to work that out pretty quickly just by comparing the two. So if you can spend that time testing it before and afterwards so you know that the areas that you're working on are important and they genuinely help you, then you don't necessarily need to take advice from other people because you know where to be, you know what works. And if you're seeing someone for the rest of your symptoms, you can present that information to them and then you can work together to solve your back pain as quickly as it can be solved. So, so hopefully that's a useful little trick, it's a brilliant exercise. Um, if you've ever come in to see me as a physical therapist and you've had back pain or neck pain, for example, there's every chance you would have had an exercise like this as some homework to do. So um, it's such a great exercise, such a simple and safe exercise to do. So uh, so if you, if you enjoyed the video, uh, please leave a like below. I would appreciate the support. And then obviously if you can subscribe, um, it just helps these videos come across more people. Uh, we're trying to put them out daily or as close to daily as we can just because this information is information that we talk with patients on a day-to-day -day basis and it can be quite useful um, to have that information sort of given to everyone else because there's a fair chance if they're going through something and it helps them then they're not going to be the only person going through that so so please let us know if this is helpful uh, feel free to share it around uh, but until next time thanks for watching and i'll see you tomorrow bye